Amazing Spider-Man has hit 800 issues. Dan Slott is wrapping up his 10-year run on the title, but not everyone can celebrate. Spider-Man is up against his deadliest foe yet, and not everyone will survive. Hey, I'm Brian from BMA Comics Con. Today we're going to review Amazing Spider-Man number 800. Don't forget to enter to win a copy of this issue free. More information on that at the end of this video. Previously in Amazing Spider-Man. Norman Osborn has been injected with nanites to prevent him from accessing the goblin serum that flows through his blood. So he teams up with the Carnage symbiote to purge himself of Peter Parker's nanotechnology that blocks his power. Now combined with Carnage, he has become Red Goblin. Peter fails to defeat Red Goblin and gets a broken leg for his troubles. So he calls on the Spider family and friends to help him, but Red Goblin doesn't possess any of the normal symbiote weaknesses and nearly kills every one of them until Agent Anti-Venom shows up and proves to be his only weakness. Flash Thompson, Agent Anti-Venom, uses all the energy he has to save and heal Peter and the Super Friends, leaving Flash out of commission. So Peter races off to stop Red Goblin from killing Mary Jane and Aunt May. Peter is late getting to each of his loved ones, but luckily two of his enemies have redeemed themselves by holding off Red Goblin until backup arrives. To try and even the score, Eddie Brock gives Peter Parker the Venom symbiote, so now Peter races to the old Oscorp building where Red Goblin is trying to get back his old company. That is where Peter confronts Red Goblin for the last time. In this fight, Norman reveals that he has poisoned half of Spider-Man's friends and family and could easily kill them with the snap of his finger. Luckily, Flash Thompson was there, and he used his anti-venom powers to remove the poison that was in Peter's family and friends, even Mary Jane and Aunt May. This brought Peter and Flash close as Flash reveals that he learned Spider-Man's secret identity. But in the middle of a battle with Red Goblin is no time for a heart-to-heart -heart moment. Red Goblin attacks Flash, mortally wounding him, setting off Peter's rage and makes him truly turn into Venom. It is then Flash gives his last words to inspire Peter to calm down and don't let rage consume him. Peter calms down, although now is the time for rage, as Red Goblin has finally learned that Peter's weakness is all human life, not just those close to him. So Red Goblin goes on a killing spree in Times Square, with his final victim being Peter Parker. As his final breath draws closer, Peter uses Norman's pride against him and convinces him that it will forever be known that Carnage killed Spider-Man, causing Norman to release him and they both remove their symbiotes for a final showdown. First off, let me start by saying I'm sorry for leaving you guys hanging like that on the end of the book. I just realized I haven't given away a copy of this to the winner, so it's possible at this time not everyone has read the story. And if that's true, you should have skipped to this part anyway and not have me spoil everything. Comment below if you think it, going forward I should just spoil the whole issue. It's a good thing that this is an oversized issue, because I don't know how they could have closed the story in a normal 28 page issue. However, I don't think it's fair to call it an 80 page issue if all 80 pages aren't story. That would be my biggest gripe with it. One thing I can't complain about is the character arc that John Jonah Jameson goes through. He hits his highs and lows in this issue trying to redeem himself. I am curious as to how long the deaths of this issue will last. Those who died, died in a good way that is very fitting to be and could be permanent. And if there ever were a lasting death in comics, it would be in the Spider-Man book. This issue showed me that Dan Slott knows who Peter Parker is. And he should, he's been writing him for over 10 years. But all of what makes Peter stand out from his with great power must come great responsibility to his nobody dies on my watch attitude and his he's the biggest screw up behaviors are all present in this issue. Well, I'm sure it's easy to grasp all of those if you have the length of almost four issues to do it in. The pacing of the story is fast. There isn't any downtime. But when the Red Goblin has threatened to kill everyone you love, you kind of have to react quickly. Most of the art for Amazing Spider-Man wasn't even inside the comic. It was on the cover. There were like 14 different variant covers to choose from. You can go to the link in the description and take a look at the different variants. And let me know which one your favorite is. I got the Greg Land and Raquel Rosenberg one. It was going to be either that or the John Romita Sr. Each chapter of this issue was drawn and colored by a different team. The good thing is that they followed a similar style. And the story to me was compelling enough for me to not notice until the end. The last part, Goodbye, drawn by Marcus Martin and colored by Montessa Vincent, is much different than the rest of the book. Besides that, I really like the art in this issue.
Flash Thompson. Everything Flash Thompson is great in this story, including his send-off. I didn't read his Agent Venom comic, but now I wish I had. He is a really cool character, and I really like the irony that he used to bully Peter, but also idolized him unknowingly. Then the way that they turn around and have Peter take inspiration from him, I really like that. I like that he got to inspire his hero. I don't know why it is, but I really like the image of Spider-Man and Green Goblin standing in front of the flames, ready to give their last fight. I'm giving this comic 9 out of 10 stars. It has everything you could want in a Spider-Man story. Callbacks to your favorite parts from his past, a couple of your favorite Spider-Man villains and friends, and the return of the black suit Spider-Man. Hey, quick reminder, you still have until tomorrow, June 1st, when the winner will be chosen and revealed to enter to win a copy of this issue. To do so, you'll find a link in the description on the video to watch. Or you can just click the card here and see what other comics came out yesterday, May 30th. With you guys' help, it looks like I'm going to hit the goal of 250 subscribers by June 1st. So I'll have a second copy of this issue added to the giveaway. So please subscribe and leave a comment on my video, New Comics for May 30th, 2018. Thank you guys for your time and for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and give it a thumbs up. I'll see you again tomorrow and every Friday for a look at the comics coming out next Wednesday. Thanks again. Until next time, Brian out.